section that we're recording. Okay. Perfect. So welcome everybody. My name is Lauren from Second Star to the Right. And we are so, so excited today to welcome Laura Rediger, who wrote Eliana Reaches for the Moon. And she's going to share her story. She's going to read it. And then she has some fun stuff planned for the end. So join me for a round of applause for Laura Rediger. Thank you. Okay. I am um, going to show you the book. It's right here. It's called Aliana Reaches for the Moon. And it's written by me, Laura Rediger, and it's illustrated by Ariel Boroff. Beautiful pictures that you'll be seeing in a moment. I'm going to read the book to you through um, a slideshow, and then I'll come back and you'll be able to see me again. Okay. Let me get back to the slideshow. Here we are. Aliana Reaches for the Moon, a steam book for aspiring scientists. Written by Laura Rediger, illustrated by Ariel Boroff, published by Ifrig Publishing. Aliana lives in the Rocky Mountains, where the night sky holds more stars than you can dream of and the moon shimmers like gold. The full moon lights up Aliana's whole world. Each and every morning, Papa says, it's a beautiful mountain day. What do you have planned? Each and every morning, Aliana replies, we're exploring in the woods, or I'm reading an interesting book. Today, she is reading about the moon. Sometimes, using her favorite word, Aliana says, I'm creating something special. You'll see when I'm done. Aliana has a big imagination and loves making things for her family, especially her little brother, Gustavo. Some days, Aliana creates things in her room. Some days, Aliana creates things outside. Sometimes Aliana creates things at night. Today, Aliana is baking with Gustavo. Are we making these cuppy cakes for my birthday? No, Gus, your birthday is still two weeks away. Besides, I'm working on a secret present for you. Be patient. Aliana's creativity is messy. She often leaves a trail of treasures around the house. Her room is the messiest of all. Mama and Papa are very patient for grown-ups, but even the most patient grown-ups say, clean your room. Creativity can be a little messy. I'm experimenting to make Gus's birthday surprise just right. You'll see. Aliana's parents know their daughter is a clever girl with an amazing imagination. If she's creating something for Gustavo, they'll just have to wait. Instead of finishing her project, Aliana spends her days outside with Gus, exploring animal tracks and wildflowers in the woods. She notices things and shows them to Gus. She teaches him how to notice things too. Mama, look what I made. You always manage to see the beauty in everything, Mama replies. After a week of hikes in the woods, 
a day horseback riding, and two visits to the library, Aliana spends a day playing in her room. At first, her parents think she is cleaning. Sometimes parents can be silly. She's reading to discover how to create the perfect birthday surprise. Aliana organizes pieces of quartz, crystals and coins from her piggy bank into rows. Using marbles and several small mirrors, she plays with new shapes. She selects two stem vases, two bottles from the recycling bin, and one very tall, skinny drinking glass. Aliana pours water into each one and carries them on a cookie sheet to her room. Carefully, she drops coins, marbles, and pieces of quartz into the five containers. She tops each one with a crystal from her collection and steps back to look at her masterpiece. Perfecto. During dinner, Papa asks, did you do anything fun today? My secret project for Gus is ready. You'll see it tonight, Aliana whispers. After dinner, Gus and Aliana climb into their treehouse to read books. Gus is excited because tomorrow is his birthday. Aliana is excited too. For weeks, she has been planning and preparing for tonight. The sun begins to set and the light in the treehouse grows dim. Aliana waits for the moon to appear in the night sky. She is almost ready to show off her creation. Gus, she whispers, come with me. Aliana sees the moon reach the perfect spot, and then, just like that, it happens. Her experiment works. Aliana is beaming. Her face is almost as bright as the full moon. The light from the moon shines through the skylight onto the creation in Aliana's room. In the window, Aliana's masterpiece sparkles and shimmers. It doesn't take much imagination to see five candles glowing. You made me a magical birthday cake, Gus shouts. We have our very own astronomer. I'm so proud of you, Papa says. And that's the end of the story. And on the last page, there's an author's note, note explaining the phases of the moon. And I won't read it to you, but it explains why even though the moon always stays the same shape, which is a sphere, that it looks like it's different shapes during the 29 days that it revolves around the Earth. And it's because the sun is reflecting light and different amounts of light reflect based on where the moon is in its revolution. And now I'd like to share with you some photos. And these were some of my inspiration from, there they are, this was some of my inspiration when I wrote the book, Aliana Reaches for the Moon. When I moved to the Rocky Mountains in 2016, which is when I started writing the story, I discovered that the moon is much brighter without all of the light pollution here away from the city.
I'm going to show you a few of the pictures that I've taken over the time that I was here. Some of these are of the lunar eclipse that happened a couple of years ago. And I took pictures of this. Is, these are the lunar eclipse. I took pictures every eight minutes to show how it was changing. And as the eclipse happened, less and less of the moon was visible. And then it turned and it came back and became visible. And it had a reddish purple glow, which is what these pictures are. These are unfiltered pictures of the moon with a very powerful zoom lens. These are pictures that I took a year ago, April in 2019, after the book out and the moon i love seeing the moon and it's touching the branches of the tree it looks like it's touching of course it's not they're many many miles apart but i enjoy that and i've got a few pictures here of different phases of the moon. here's the moon over the lake when i was visiting on the east coast last summer. Crater. There's the moon rising over Red Rock here in Colorado. I love seeing the way the moon looks filtered through the clouds. And I, I really like seeing a very small crescent, but you can see the outline of the rest of the moon. And now I'm going to go back if I can figure this out, how to go back to our presentation. And I'm gonna hit stop presenting and hopefully now you can see me, yes? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, great. So um, is there, um, can I show you some of the things that Aliana used to inspire her project? Yes, we'd love that. Okay. So um, this is a crystal. You can buy these in a lot of different kinds of stores. And if if you, I'm holding it up so that you can see it in the camera. Um, and sometimes water makes things reflect, which is why she used water in the vases that she had. And then she used a flashlight. And I hoping I'm using a, a light bulb here that hopefully will sh can you see this will show you the colors that you can reflect through the um, through the different facets in a crystal other things that you can use are this is a votive uh, candle and it's glass there's not a candle in it right now because it will reflect the light better this way. And you can get these anywhere. You can get them at stores like Michael's or even um, sometimes you can find things like this at the dollar store. So it's fun to use things to reflect light, create rainbows, and, um, and experiment. And that's what I really want children to understand after reading this book that it's fun to experiment and it's fun to see what happens when you mix different things. These are little um, like glass beads, marbles that you can buy. I got these at Michael's and they come in a lot of different colors. So if you put different colors together, I'm not sure how I can hold these up to show you, but I'm gonna put them inside the votive. Hopefully that will help. And you can create little rainbows if you use different colors. The way these work is the um, 
the or what they're meant for, I believe, is to put in vases um, for flowers. So I had bought some different ones and I got different colors. Oh, I didn't put a green one in here yet. But you can make rainbows. You can make anything that you're interested in making. So by just combining little different things, and I've got some shiny coins in in my bag here. And when I um, sometimes when I do in-person visits, I have things like this. And um, and they can use different mirrors and other small objects, little things that you have probably around the house that you can create um, fun, fun things. So thank you. That's awesome, Laura. Thank you. My and pleasure. If you, if you have some time, we do have a couple of questions from Great. our followers. I mean, just Great. pull this up right quick. You'd think I'd be prepared, right? Having all that. <laughs> no, I'll get a sip of water while you're looking. <laughs> Thank you. It was my plan all along. <laughs> I appreciate that. So our first question is, what inspired you to write this story? And what was the hardest part once you were inspired? Well, I had... An idea, the, the first idea I had for the book was about a girl who was messy. And that was inspired um, more by my daughter, daughters, children in general, um, than my students. But I also was very inspired by my students in Chicago. I wanted to write a book that reflected them. And, um, and so... The name Aliana is a combination of two first graders from my last year teaching. And I've lost touch with one of them, but the other one I'm still in touch with quite often. Um, and her name is Valentina, the one that I have not been able to reconnect with in the last couple of years um, since the book came out is Ariana. So I combined those two names. And one of the wonderful things about being a writer is that you get to be creative, that you can make up a name. And I know when I tell children that at a school visit, their eyes light up because it's it's exciting to, to be given that permission, that freedom to be creative. Um, yeah, so, I, so it started out with the idea of being messy. And then also when I, because I had never lived far away from light pollution and a city before, when I realized how bright the light of the full moon was in my new house here in Colorado, at first I thought there was somebody with their brights on, you know, bright lights from their car in my driveway. I didn't know where the light was coming from, but I could sit on the couch and hold a book up and read by the bright lights of the moon. So, um, so I played around with the idea of using the light of the moon and I wanted, because I'm a teacher, I wanted to include uh, as many learning opportunities within the framework of a story that she had to be patient, that her parents also had to be patient with her. Um, when I reached out to some astronomers for the um, endorsements that we got for the book, one of them said, well, we don't endorse books that aren't written by people who are from our, it was from a planetarium. And, and I said, oh, I understand. I said, it's a picture book. And she said, oh, well, let me see it. And she, at half an hour later, sent me back um, one of the endorsements that's on the book that she said, I love that you're encouraging creativity and explaining to parents that science is messy because parents are so worried about the mess that their children are making that they're not providing the opportunity sometimes to be creative, to explore, to make that mess and clean up. Um, and so I, I felt that all of my years of experience as a parent um, of future scientists, now they're actually scientists, one, one of them is an engineer and and um, another is a nurse and so forth, but that allowing them to do those things and make those messes is what allowed them to gain the confidence to, to go into those kind of professions. 
That's wonderful. Thank you. And we have a question come in the chat here. What kind of camera do you use and what was the zoom you used for the close up of the moon? So I have a small, it's a handheld, I can't show it to you because it's not here in this room. Um, but I, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's actually small. It's, it, it's about the size of my phone only thicker. Um, and I, it has a 720 X, which means, um, it, it makes you 720 times closer. Um, if, if you zoom completely, um, and the reason I bought that camera instead of a big one with movable lenses and so forth um, is when I went to the camera store and I said, okay, what's the best camera that you have? And the man at, um, I'm going to give a little plug here for Mike's camera in Boulder. He said to me, the best camera is the one that you have with you all the time. And I said, oh, good point. Because that other kind of camera, you're not going to take on a hike with you. You're not going to always have and so I actually almost always have my camera with me I'm not I don't have it here in my you know next to me in the house but if I go anywhere it's almost always with me and I've been able to capture um interesting things like hawk and moose and and other other things that um are just in my in my area that's awesome. Those are incredible pictures, I have to say. They're beautiful. Thank you. So glad you shared those. And I have one more question from our Instagram here. Do you plan on writing any books in the future? And if so, will they still be science related? Yes. So I have a lot of books that I've written and I'm um, working on um, querying agents and so forth. So my goal is to, most of my books actually have science in them. Um, it wasn't the way I necessarily intended, but that is what inspires me. And so if I'm inspired, um, I feel like I will, um, write a better story. Um, I have, um, different books that I'm, that are about, um, a, uh, about simple machines and there's a little twist in there I'm not going to share right now and I <laughs> and I have one about forest fires and I have um I have one about a little girl who um a, who's in a spelling bee and her grandpa has um beehives so there's science and there's spelling and there's a competition in the story. So there's, a, a, I try to weave a lot of different elements into each story um, just so that there's layers and layers. Um, and I have one story that's not really about science, um, but that's about my dog, Charlie, who's laying here next to me sleeping and he's being a very good boy, but I'm gonna turn the camera so he can have a little time on screen if you can see him there and he's been quiet and attentive i think he's well maybe sleeping now he was awake before when i was reading because i could hear him moving a little bit but he never left the couch so it um so if he's been a big inspiration as well that's wonderful. He's been a very good boy. I am very impressed. Thank you. I am too. <laughs> and surprised, quite frankly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today, Laura. Thank you for sharing your story. If anyone wants to get a copy of Laura's book, you can do so through bookshop.org or on our e-commerce site. We've also linked in the chat the uh, Laura's website where she has additional resources and photos and stuff like that that right and on my website there's actually a lot of science experiments that's so. perfect i think we all need that right yeah. now <laughs> thank you thank, thank you, you so laura. Laura. round of applause for laura i just love the yeah. virtual round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> thanks laura it was great thank you